In a captivating anecdote, legendary guitarist Scotty Moore revealed how a seemingly mishap during the recording of Too Much turned out to become one of Elvis Presley's most memorable moments. As they were going through the song for the third time, Moore, who had the solo down, found himself in an unfamiliar key for a guitar. Fearing he would have to redo the solo since multi-tracking was not available, he decided to improvise, hoping to reach the letter A as planned. To his surprise, Elvis was pleased with the outcome, and despite Moore's concerns of having to live with that mistake forever, it became a cherished part of the recording. Despite its unconventional solo, Too Much managed to climb to the top of the Billboard chart, albeit receiving less attention today. The flip side, Playing for Keeps was a country ballad featuring harmonious exchanges between Elvis and the Jordanaires, which also made it to number 21 in Billboard's rankings. Interestingly, Colonel Tom Parker, known for promoting Elvis Presley as a singular talent, had begun crediting others on his records. Too Much, Playing for Keeps was the first single to acknowledge the Jordanaires due to their association with gospel music, which Elvis aimed to explore in an upcoming album. This unexpected move contrasted sharply with Elvis's image as a rebellious rock and roll star and hinted at his versatility as an entertainer. Despite Colonel Parker's efforts to focus on Elvis's rock and roll fame, there were signs of change within the singer himself. His love for gospel music, shared with his parents Vernon and Gladys, indicated a desire to expand his musical horizons and evolve as an artist. Nevertheless, for now, the allure of rock and roll remained strong, promising continued success and financial rewards. As the clock ticks and secrets remain hidden, whispers circulate about the eventual release of Elvis Presley's Lost Treasures. The Jordanaires, whose contribution to his records has sparked debate, are known for their doo-wop harmonies that enhance some of Elvis's most memorable songs. Their soulful lose and oz can be heard on classics like I Want You, I Need You, I Love, Any Way You Want Me, and Don't Be Cruel. But it is their work on Stuck On You that truly stands out as an essential part of the Elvis experience. Despite Elvis's overwhelming presence, these recordings are team efforts, with the Jordanaires leaving an indelible mark on the music. They also lent their talents to other artists such as Ricky Nelson, Jimmy Dean, and Conway Twitty. Though they primarily produced gospel albums and singles, their impact on the mainstream music scene is undeniable. Amidst Elvis Presley's musical experiments, he engaged in sessions at radio recorders in Hollywood, working on the soundtrack for Loving You as well as potential singles and album tracks. During these sessions, Scotty, Bill, and DJ, along with the Jordanaires and pianist Dudley Brooks, collaborated to create a unique blend of gospel and rock and roll. One of the most intriguing aspects of these sessions was Elvis's foray into religious music. The first of these songs was a million-selling hit from 1953 by Frankie Lane called, I Believe. It's an emotional song, but who is singing it? Is this person a doctor, as they claim to have heard a newborn baby cry? This enigmatic question leaves fans eagerly anticipating the release of these long-lost gems from Elvis Presley's musical legacy. Amidst a treasure trove of forgotten gems, Elvis Presley's recording sessions revealed a diverse array of songs, each with their own captivating stories. It is no secret, penned by Stuart Hamblin and first recorded by Red Foley in the Andrews Sisters, was just one such discovery. Two ballads from Reverend Thomas A. Dorsey, Peace in the Valley, and Take My Hand, Precious Lord, added a soulful depth to Presley's repertoire, with the latter composed as a tribute to Dorsey's late wife. RCA recognized the potential for these songs to transcend the Southern gospel market with the right marketing strategy. While, I believe, was already well-known, others such as Peace in the Valley, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, and the iconic All Shook Up remain largely unknown outside the South and entirely unfamiliar in the UK. The creation of All Shook Up is shrouded in mystery. Some claim it was inspired by a spilled bottle of Pepsi, while others suggest it was born from a conversation about venereal disease. Regardless of its origins, the song catapulted Presley to new heights of success after initial recordings by David Hill and Vicki Young failed to make an impact. Elvis also explored other genres, including the sentimental That's When Your Heartaches Begin, which bore influences from Johnny Ray and the Ink Spots. His skillful narration in this track showcased his versatility as a performer. 
The fusion of singing and speech was not uncommon among artists such as Brenda Lee, Jack Scott, and the Flamingos. The king of rock and roll further demonstrated his range by recording I Beg of You. Farron Young's Is It So Strange featured a poignant vocal performance, while Presley brought his own unique touch to Have I Told You Lately That I Love You, a song pinned on a hospital bed and recorded by Gene Autry, Bing Crosby, and Tex Ritter. In a secret recording session, Elvis Presley dared to sing a risque song that would have been unthinkable for official release. One Night of Sin originally recorded by Smiley Lewis. This bold move showcases the rebellious spirit within Elvis as he explored different musical territories. Thankfully, record company security ensured this daring performance remained hidden from the media. A month later, a more tame version of the song emerged, now titled One Night. The lyrics had been altered to tell the story of a man pleading with his girlfriend to spend the night with him, making it appropriate for public consumption. During these sessions, Elvis also covered songs like Blueberry Hill, I Need You So by Ivory Joe Hunter, and When It Rains, It Really Pours by Billy, the kid, Emerson. However, one track, Don't Leave Me Now, was saved for his upcoming film, Jailhouse Rock. Elvis surprised everyone when he decided against singing a ballad called Castles in the Sand. Instead, he started humming Bing Crosby's True Love and soon found himself spontaneously singing Loving You after noticing their similarities. The primary purpose of these sessions was to create the soundtrack for Loving You, with Elvis miming to the recorded songs in the film. They spent an extraordinary amount of time perfecting each track for the movie, even recording multiple versions of the title song. The number of takes for other songs such as Teddy Bear, Hot Dog, Mean Woman Blues, and Lonesome Cowboy were also notably high. This intriguing glimpse into Elvis Presley's recording session showcases his willingness to experiment with different songs, even those that pushed the boundaries of what was acceptable for release. His passion for music and determination to create the perfect soundtrack for Loving You is evident in the amount of time spent perfecting each track. As the tape rolled, Elvis Presley recorded numerous takes of his songs, including Party, Got A Lot O oh, Living To Do, and Loving You. With over 90 versions of Loving You alone, it seems excessive, but some takes were mere seconds long. An officially released double CD of the film's score discloses this plethora of recordings from 2006, though it can be tedious with the constant voice announcing HC, take three. However, Elvis's laughter suggests that he did not find the multitude of takes too taxing. One such song, Lonesome Cowboy, was pinned by Sid Tepper and Roy Bennett, a Brill building team known for their work with country music. Although they had connections to Presley's camp, their contributions were not always up to par. A French double CD dedicated to their collaborations with Elvis exists, but it lacks any major hit singles and often features subpar material. Wife No. 99, a novelty song, serves as an example of a track that Elvis rightfully rejected during the demo stage. The team also composed One More Day for the film, which was performed by actor Mickey Shaughnessy instead of Presley. The catchy party, sometimes referred to as Let's Have A Party, was written by Jesse May Robinson and is criticized for its short duration at only 86 seconds. However, an additional verse featured in the film could have been included to extend the song's length. RCA's financial reports for 1956 were impressive due to Elvis selling over 12 million singles and 3 million albums within his first year with them. Despite considerable criticism, some prominent figures in the music industry accepted and appreciated Presley's style. In March 1957, jazz legend Louis Armstrong expressed his interest in recording with Elvis, stating, you'd be surprised what we could do together. Although it would have been an exciting collaboration, Colonel Parker likely would not have approved. Even a cameo from Armstrong might have fit seamlessly into the film King Creole. In 1957, a false quote attributed to Elvis circulated, claiming he had said, the only thing Negroes can do for me is shine my shoes and buy my records. This statement was unequivocally untrue, and it prompted Presley to respond with an official denial. It is speculated that Colonel Parker may have orchestrated this response in an attempt to quell any potential controversy surrounding his client's reputation.